Today I'm going to be reviewing the TP5100 lithium ion battery charging board. So previously I bought this TP5100 boards and I did a test on this and they got burnt out for different reasons and I'm not sure whether I got a bad batch or the, the boards are designed badly. So I purchased a, a different board and uh, the circuit board on this board on the right side here uh, it's a little bit different than these boards so today I want to test to see if this will work as designed and hopefully this will work and I'm gonna come back and talk about the difference between the two boards but first let's do a test on this new board the TP5100 board is basically an upgrade for the TP4056 board the old board can only really charge at 1 amp whereas the TP5100 can charge at 2 amps and also there's one more feature for the TP5100 is that it can charge a 2S lithium ion battery at 8.4 volt instead of 4.2 volts how good is it? that's what we're going to find out in this video first of all let's take a look at the spec sheet of the TP5100 we got a dual charge at 8.4 volts or single charge at 4.2 volts the input voltage can reach up to 18 volts the charge current can go up to 2 amps and is programmable I'm not sure about programmable maybe you can change the size of the resistor but it's not really uh, that easy to program on the TP5100 board we have two small soldering connections here and if these two are disconnected the board will charge at 4.2 volts if you connect these two terminals together the board will charge at 8.4 volts so I solder a couple of wires and uh, with a switch here so that if I turn on the switch you connect the two terminals together and the board will charge at 8.4 volts if I turn this off the board will charge at 4.2 volts here's another page on the TP5100 data sheet that shows the input voltage we got 4.5 volts, 12 and 18 volts so at 12 and 18 volts the board acts as a buck converter that reduces the voltage down to either 8.4 volts or 4.2 volts but at 4.5 volts I'm curious to see if it turns into a boost converter because it has to boost the board up to 8.4 volts and that's what I'm going to find out next alright I have connected the board to a 5 volt power supply input now let's turn the board on you see the output is 4.1 volts the light is blue that's because it's not connected to a load yet so it's not connected to a battery yet and that's why the charging current now is zero now the switch is in the off position and that's why the output is 4.2 volts now if I turn the switch on let's see what happens hmm it's interesting so the switch is on and the output is 5.1 volts and also the light is blinking red alright I've got my 2S battery connected now let's connect the battery 7.8 volts see what happens we turn the power supply on so 5 volt input power supply nothing happens so it's not charging the battery at uh, 8.4 volts when you hook it up to a 5 volt power supply so at 5 volt input it can only charge a single lithium ion and it does not charge a 2S lithium ion battery pack I've got it connected to a 5 volt power supply the series selector switch is off now let's turn on the power supply it's charging at 2 amps that's pretty good next test I've got a 12 volt power supply coming in selector switch is off for single cell charging battery is at 3.8 volts now let's turn on the power supply alright charging at 2 amps at 4 volts I've got the system connected to the 12 volt power supply 
the series selector switch is on for 2S charging got two Tesla cells in series at seven and a half volts now let's turn on the power supply all right it's charging at 8.1 volts at exactly two amps there's one thing I like about this board is that it has a float charge option so right now my battery is full and it's at 8.18 volts and the light is blue but once every 20 seconds or so the light will turn red and the voltage will increase just for a brief moment and then the light will turn there you go and then the light will turn back to blue again there you go and the voltage goes back down again this is good for a battery when it's hooked up to a system that has a phantom load and if your system has a phantom load and you don't use it for a while before you know it the battery would be drained down completely and it's not good for the battery because it might not wake up again so with a float charge like this it will help keep the battery topping up and prevent over discharge the last thing I want to try is the power input that is higher voltage because on the spec sheet here it says that it can take up to 18 volt DC so I'm curious to see what it's like to take 18 volts higher voltage power supply is not a good thing for this board because it has to convert the voltage down to 4.2 or 8.4 volts and the extra voltage has to be dissipated by heat and on this board there's no heat sink and this is what happens when it gets too hot let's give it a try I don't have an 18 volt power supply but I do have a 16 volt laptop power adapter that puts out 16 volt DC next I got my 16 volt power supply selector switch is off for charging 1S and the battery is at 3.8 volts now let's plug it in all right it's working great charging at 1.9 amps 4 volts I got my 16 volt power supply ready the series selector switch is on for 2S charging two Tesla batteries in series at seven and a half volts let's plug it in charging at about 1.8 amps at 8 volts the thing is it gets extremely hot very quickly so for this you would definitely need a heat sink or a cooling fan or both that's one important thing when you charge a 2s cell this way this charger is not balanced charge your 2s battery so it will charge your battery up to about 8.4 volts it doesn't care whether each cell is 4.2 volts or this cell is 3 volts and this cell is 5 volt um, it will charge to the maximum voltage but it doesn't balance charge each individual cell and therefore one cell might be much higher than the other one and therefore it might be overcharged so it's very important that you check your batteries before you charge with a charger like this to make sure that your battery is at least balanced you don't have to balance charge your battery pack every single time you just have to balance charges like once in a while but before you use something like this just make sure that your battery is the same voltage for every cell this charger here only charge this battery up to about 8.2 volts and then it will stop it doesn't charge above 8.2 volts so there's still a little bit room for error there's one thing about this TP5100 boards is that they don't have a reverse current protection so if you hook them up in reverse polarity they will burn out and I have evidence right here talking about burning out boards let's talk about the four boards that I got burned previously and these were from my previous purchase this board over here on the right side is from a new purchase so it's a different board than these even though they are all the same TP5100 boards and the reason I got four of these burnt out is for the first one is hooked up in reversed the second one is hooked up to 10 volt DC 12 volt and 16 volts 
and they all burnt out within just a few seconds after I turned it on. So it's clear that I had a bad batch and they don't work as intended because probably they all have some design problem. And clearly I didn't have any problem whatsoever with the new board. So for sure that these boards have some kind of problem. And in fact, between the new board and the old board, there is a difference in the design. You can see here, right here, there is a big capacitor. On this side, there's no capacitor. Instead, it has two more smaller capacitor. And in the same place, we got a resistor in which it doesn't have resistor on this side. And also the circuitry on the back is also very different. This is the new board, that's the old board. So just be careful when you buy these TP5100 boards, there might be a design problem with these boards. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.